know, people sometimes prefer a OnePlus or a Samsung phone over any other phone, not just because they make good phones, but also because these brands have built a good reputation for themselves over the years. They're brand value is good, so to speak. Which is why I decided to compare the latest OnePlus 10T to the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE, a phone that's consistently made it to the top in our best phones list for uh, you know under 15,000. In fact, we made a video very recently. If you haven't watched it yet, a link should pop up right now. Go and check it out. That has a list of the best phones under rupees 15,000. All right, so if you don't know me yet, I'm Ashad. you're watching Track & Tech English. Let's begin this comparison. The first thing that you notice is that the OnePlus 10T is a much bigger phone compared to the Galaxy S21 FE. The S21 FE is lighter and thinner compared to the OnePlus 10T and the in-hand feel of this phone is definitely much better because it is compact and feels more planted in the hand and more comfortable to use compared to the big chunky size of the 10T. Now OnePlus uses a glass sandwich design on the 10T. What that means is that you get Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on the front, Gorilla Glass 5 on the back and a plastic frame. In comparison, the Galaxy S21 FE has three different materials. It has a plastic bag, a metal mid-frame and a Corning Gorilla Glass Victus protection on the front. Yes, the S21 FE doesn't scream premium because it uses a plastic bag, but when compared to the glossy glass design of the OnePlus 10T, especially in this jade green color, I think that the Galaxy S21 FE looks more professional and premium. Honestly, if you have to buy the OnePlus 10T, do buy the black variant of the phone because this one also catches a lot of fingerprints. Having said that, if you don't like this color and if this is the only option that's available, you at least get a case in the box and a charger and a cable along with it. All that you get inside the box of the S21 FE is a cable. So when you do spend rupees 50,000 on a phone, the lack of accessories is definitely a letdown. And if you have to subscribe to any channel, then please let it be ours because we put in a lot of effort for these videos. There's too much happening on the back end and we would love all your support. So hit that subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever we put out an awesome new tech video. Also, if you like the kind of videos that we make, hit that like button and maybe even comment below for the sake of the YouTube algorithm. Now coming back to the design, I really like the camera island on the S21 FE. It sort of seamlessly blends into the rear and looks very, very good. The OnePlus 10T's camera module looks pretty disjointed in comparison. It doesn't feel like a part of the entire design and stands out a little too much. Furthermore, OnePlus has unceremoniously decided to drop the alert slider on the OnePlus 10T and they should know that fans of OnePlus are going to be super disappointed with that move. And they gave some really vague reason about not having enough space within the chassis to accommodate the more powerful components that you get with the OnePlus 10T. You know what, I call BS whenever I see one. Also, the S21 FE gives you a whole lot more premium for the money that you're paying with respect to the design of the phone you get IP68 rating, which means that you can dunk it in water for you know up to 1.5 meters for 30 minutes. You also get wireless charging and USB 3.2 which is much faster speeds compared to the USB 2.0 speeds on the OnePlus 10T. For a phone that's purportedly a gaming phone, the lack of uh, no HDMI direct out streaming options is definitely a huge letdown. Overall, when it comes to the design and the build quality, I would say that the S21 FE takes an easy win out here. Moving on, the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE has a 6.4 inch display compared to the large 6.7 inch display on the you know, OnePlus 10T. To me, the size of the S21 FE's display is perfect, but I know that a lot of people prefer bigger displays and for them, the OnePlus 10T will be perfectly fine. And regardless, both these phones come with an AMOLED panel, 120Hz refresh rate and no LTPO technology. I'm happy to report that both these phones support HDR playback on YouTube and Netflix straight out of the box. And when I viewed HDR content on both these phones side by side, I can clearly tell that the S21 FE has a higher peak brightness compared to uh, you know the OnePlus 10T. Plus, Samsung does better HDR tuning, especially in YouTube, where you can see a better control over the highlights on this phone compared to the OnePlus 10T. However, it is worth noting that the S21 FE has an 8-bit panel compared to the OnePlus 10T's 10-bit panel, but in daily usage, I really couldn't tell the difference, which is kind of odd. It should make a difference, but I think that the 8-bit panels on Samsung phones are generally very, very good. Moving on to the touch 
sampling rate or TSR of both these phones and OnePlus is definitely more proficient. You get a basic TSR of 360 hertz and an instant touch sampling rate of 1000 hertz when you're playing certain games. The Galaxy S21 FE tops out at 240 hertz. Now in daily usage, most users won't be able to tell the difference between touch performance of both these phones. They're both very, very good. But when you're gaming and when you need that extra push and when you need that extra bit of responsiveness, the OnePlus 10T does come in handy. Also, what you'll notice is a proper speed difference in the in-display fingerprint scanner of the OnePlus 10T and the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. The optical in-display fingerprint scanner on the 10T is definitely faster. You just need to tap on it and it unlocks, whereas the S21 FE requires a bit of a push. And haptic feedback, which is something that you also feel on the display when you're actually using these two phones, is definitely better on OnePlus because with O haptics, you get tighter vibrations and more precise vibrations too. S21 FE is not bad, but you know, you do not get that tight of vibrations. In fact, you get a very light feedback from the display of the S21 FE. Now, if you've been following Tracketing English for the past couple of weeks, you know that we've taken this decision to split, uh, you know, the camera comparison part of the review from the main comparison because, mainly because it would otherwise become a very, very lengthy video. And in general, you have a lot to talk about when you talk about the camera section of the review. Therefore, for the difference between the camera performance of the OnePlus 10T and the Galaxy S21 FE, I'd like to redirect you to this link that pops up right now. Please go ahead and watch that video. You know what, I've always been revealing the winner until now, but this time around, I don't want to reveal it because then there's no incentive for you to go and watch that video. So, I'll do one thing though, is I'll give you a slight hint, the winner is no real surprise. So now we are at the performance section of the review and the OnePlus 10T knocks the Galaxy S21 FE out of the park. If you're not aware already, the S21 FE uses Samsung's very own Exynos 2100 chip, which is a custom made chip and it's a very old chip which was available in the S21 series, which was launched much earlier. And the OnePlus 10T uses the latest and greatest and best, uh, you know, Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 system on chip which is definitely way, way more powerful. You get much higher scores on the OnePlus 10T in synthetic benchmarks like Ant2 and Geekbench. Plus the Exynos 2100, in typical Exynos fashion, throttles way, way more. In our CPU throttle test, you can see the difference in the CPU stability scores of both these phones. In fact, even in 3D Mark, despite the fact that the OnePlus 10T has a far more powerful GPU, which you can see from the final scores out here, you can also see that, you know, it doesn't throttle as much as the S21 FE does. Yes, the OnePlus 10T can get slightly hot or very warm during sustained gaming sessions, but it definitely doesn't throttle as much as the S21 FE. In fact, even the S21 FE can get warm under sustained workloads. Regardless, the OnePlus 10T is the phone that you should pick, especially especially if you're a gamer and if performance is of paramount importance to you. Also because I noticed that, you know, in Call of Duty Mobile, you can actually get 120 frame rates per second and you get the best kind of graphical fidelity and the best frame rates on the OnePlus 10T on any graphically intensive game like, you know, even BGMI or, uh, you know, Apex Legends and of course Call of Duty Mobile as well. So when it comes to the quality of the network reception, both of these are very good. You also do get support for 4G plus carrier aggregation. But what I did notice in my testing is that, you know, Samsung definitely offers better call quality through the earpiece for sure. So now what about battery life? Well, you get a higher capacity 4,800 mAh unit inside the OnePlus 10T and you get a 4,500 mAh unit inside the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. In my testing, clearly with the 8 Plus Gen 1's power optimizations, the OnePlus 10T offers better battery life. I got about one day plus of usage where the S21 FE would not last me as, as much. Uh, you know, this would last me about five hours of screen on time, whereas, you know, the OnePlus 10T would last me about six hours on similar usage. And when it comes to charging speeds, it's not even a fair fight. 150 watt versus 25 watt. So it takes 20 minutes to charge the OnePlus 10T. It takes over an hour to charge the Galaxy S21 FE. Now, yes, the S21 FE offers wireless charging but i'm pretty certain that most people in the audience do not want wireless charging and they want faster charging speeds for sure i mean 25 watts is really slow for a premium grade flagship phone so yeah, even if samsung had offered at least 45 watt charging then we could have you know softened the blow a little bit but you know what that's not really the case oneplus is definitely better at battery life battery performance and overall performance as well now coming to the software, you know what, when we fished out the Galaxy S21 FE out of the box 
for this comparison an update was waiting for us and you know what that update had along with it the august security patch that's how good samsung has been these days with software updates you also get promised support for four years of software updates and five years of security updates and samsung has been very very good with it now in comparison the oneplus 10 is running on the july security patch which is not too bad either and it also comes with you know a promise three years of you know software updates and four years of security updates also oneplus works very closely with google so i'm not really uh, concerned about the update cycle it's going to be better in the future for sure now coming to oxygen os 12 versus one ui 4.1 I generally prefer One UI over Oxygen OS primarily because it's feature rich and the animations have become slicker and faster now. Yes, of course, uh, you know, the OnePlus 10 stays more stable and doesn't, uh, you know, sort of stutter as much as the S21 FE does. It doesn't stutter too much, but you know what? It does a few times, which the OnePlus 10 does not even. It gives you consistently good performance. But you know what? Oxygen OS is not the same Oxygen OS that we knew in the past. It's not as refined. It's somewhere in between right now. It's trying to hide its identity from us by saying that it's not color OS but we all know that it's actually color OS but One UI has been doing a good job like I mean One UI has become better over the years and it's really really good at the moment so really One UI seems to be the better bet for me and of course you get the promise of more uh, uh, you know frequent software updates as well. Samsung is definitely playing the long game when it comes to software update commitment. Okay, let me break it down quickly for you. The S21 FE remains my bet for the best phone under Rs. 50,000. It is a very refined experience that makes very few omissions. Yes, it makes compromises, but there's no feature that has been completely deleted. You get almost everything, whether it is IP68 rating, whether it's wireless charging, whether it's flagship great camera quality. There's a lot to like with the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. The only downsides are definitely the slow charging speeds and the fact that the performance is not as good as the OnePlus 10T, that's for sure. If you are a performance nut, then this is not the phone for you. If you want a more balanced phone, then the S21 FE will work just fine. The OnePlus 10T is a performance beast through and through. If you're a gamer and if you're considering a OnePlus phone, then you cannot go wrong with the 10T. And it is a performance beast when it comes to charging speeds as well. 150 watt max charging speeds, charging from 0 to 100 in 20 minutes is just nuts. But there are glaring omissions and compromises as well. Like the fact that you do not get that alert slider anymore, something that's set apart OnePlus phones until now. And also, of course, you do not get any IP rating or wireless charging either. And you also do not get great camera performance. It's good enough, but it doesn't come close to the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE. When you're paying this much for a phone, slightly better camera performance is definitely expected. So what would you pick? An overall balanced phone or a performance monster? which is basically the S21 FE or the OnePlus 10T. Let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, this is Airshot signing off. Keep tracking and stay safe.